of you are in charge of your company's end user endpoints? Desktops, laptops, okay, see a few out there, cool. Probably think you're spending too much? Well, I think we may have a solution for you. So let's go ahead and get started. My name is Melissa Stein. I'm a director of new initiatives and end user computing. And I have to say this is a core project that my team has worked on for the last couple years that we're gonna be talking about today. I'm joined with Rafael Blanco from Intuit, and you will hear how his experience has been with this product. So we're gonna talk a little bit of challenges. Hopefully these, since you, a lot of you actually do work with these end user endpoints, some of these may be challenges that you specifically face. I'm gonna introduce this just last night launched Workspace's Thin Client. Raphael will come up. We'll talk about money, because everyone always wants to talk about money. And then I'll, we'll wrap it up. So, what happens? You hire people, you think they're gonna be great employees, then they're like, hmm, they left. What else happened? Their laptop left too. From government to security to Nike, you know these names on this slide. It's not uncommon that you hire someone and they have this regular laptop, they can re-image it, and hey, it's for my friend, it's for me, it's for my family. Oh, I sold it on eBay, yay. I thought I joined that job, but actually what I was doing was trying to make a profit. So we wanted to make something that was gonna be a lot more secure and not have to worry so much about if that employee leaves, that that computing device leaves with them. So we talked to easily 100 customers when we developed and in the course of development of this product. And a few key themes came about. One was these devices are really expensive. Now again, some of you may have very high-end developers, and you're gonna get them everything they possibly want. But that's not your standard workforce, right? You have people, the front office, the back office, contact centers, and they may not need all the power in a $1,500 or like Raphael over here, a three, $4,000 laptop. <laughs> uh, and it's not even just the cost of the device, right? You have to put the operating system, the management software, the security software, the logistics, the support, and it really, really all adds up. And you have to do all of that work at a time when, you know, if you're in IT, there's not necessarily a whole lot of you. You guys work really, really hard. So MIT did a survey in Q1 of this year of 250 IT executives. 56% of them said that their number one concern was finding qualified IT professionals. Now again, for you to be using IT, that's good for you but it also means you're working a lot of hours because there's not enough of you to go around. And what you don't want to be doing is taking things out of boxes and sticking them on shelves and literally hand counting inventory, right? You should be doing this Gen AI. You should be going ahead and modernizing legacy applications or actually just helping your employees, right? When they get stuck, right, you're, there, you're one of the key people that they turn to to actually help them. And then shipping, on all top of that. Like delivery manifest, you wanna fill out a delivery manifest? What's the import? Can I import to that country? What's the rules in that country? Did it actually get there? Did I order some, name your favorite OEM devices, and it's been six weeks and they haven't shown up? Like, people need devices to do their jobs. So shipping and logistics, we also heard, is a really key challenge. And then finally, security, right? You just saw all those headlines. Well, guess what? You can stick a piece of, you can stick a thumb drive, removable media in your laptop. And according to Aberdeen, big security firm, 36% of all data exfiltration happens through a thumb drive. So laptops are a great way to get data out. They're also a great way to get bad data in. Right? You all know shadow apps, right? shadow IT, they're downloading whatever they want. And a lot of times it's not malicious, not intentional, but they're uploading applications that may have malware or something else in them. And so security came up as the fourth key concern that we heard from our customers. So with that said, I'm gonna go grab it here. 
I'm happy to introduce the Workspace's thin client. Little five inch cube. It looks like an echo cube. <laughs> it does, and we can, and we'll take questions at the end. So you see this little cube here? This is now a computing device that has all the power you need to run a virtual desktop. Whether that's Amazon Workspaces, if you need a complete desktop, Workspaces Web, if you need a secure browsing solution, or AppStream, if you need a non-persistent desktop, or you have a lab situation or other situation where you just want to stream a few applications. So let's unpack this for a second. If I turn it around here, that's what it looks like. I know it's very hard to see on stage, so I'm just going to put it down. But yes, it doesn't weigh very much. Not heavy. So, um, so under the covers, uh, it's an octa-core ARM CPU. There is also an ARM GPU. Very little, real, very little RAM on the device. All the power, all the compute, everything happens in the cloud. It is truly a thin client. But we wanted to make sure it was feature rich. So we have dual monitor support. And with another hub that we offer, we can actually change it from just dual monitor mirroring to dual screen extension. We can support all your favorite peripherals. Uh, we do wired keyboard. Uh, we can do a wireless keyboard, we can do a Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse, headset, webcam, so everything you need to set up your employees so that they can do their job. So if this interests you, which I hope it does, definitely was excited uh, for me to do that, um, there's very simple to get started. So these are available as of last night in the US and very soon in European countries on Amazon Business. So you or your procurement team go in there, order, order the thin client. If you need peripherals, order them. If you don't, you can use what you have. No, not needed, but it's all there for you. Amazon then ships it directly to your employee because we know a lot of people are working from home still or they may be hybrid. But if you have an office, you can ship to the office as well. But again, it's gonna go directly to the employee. You're not gonna have to work with or deal with logistics. You unbox this, or the employee unbox it, cable it up. They are given a unique activation code that then registers the thin client device to your account over there. And I'm gonna show you about a little bit about what that looks like. And then all of that is managed in the AWS console. We really wanted to keep the entire process from end user and for IT administration simple. So let's talk about a few use cases. So as I said, we just launched yesterday. So we've had a lot of beta customers over the last few months, anywhere from hospitality to financial to insurance to retail. A lot of these have call centers. You have people that often man your call center, these agents, who have very high turnover rates. The industry average is 40%. If you're an outsourcer, you may see over 100%. That means over your entire, your entire workforce force is gonna change over more than once a year. Yet, these people are handling the most critical information, right? They are your front line to your customers. And you're giving them personal health information. You're giving them very, very personal customer information. Yeah, we're at Amazon, so we take what people buy very seriously. I mean, don't you think that some of these uh, Inquirer and tabloids would really want to know what some famous people buy on Amazon, right? Of course they would. But that is really, really proprietary. And we trust our people, and we need to give them systems to keep that secure. And it's not just the security, right? Because if that device walks out, it can walk out with information. But it's also a huge capital expenditure. I kept hearing oh, I have to write this off, I have to write this off, the finance team is calling me again, am I really writing off more capital expense? So we need to make sure that I keep that exp capital expense cost low. And they're just like, I just don't even want to deal with hardware, right? Like, I'm not an OEM, I don't build hardware. I want to service my employee base, I want to give them the applications they need. I don't want to be storing and shelving and shipping, so I want to get out of the hardware business. So we, import, we actually tested a lot of applications that are used in the contact center for just this use case. So we have validated Amazon Connect. 
We have also gone through full debt validation of WebEx contact center by Cisco. And even further with Cisco, we have validated their webcams and their 300 and 500 series headsets. So you can go anything from something that's really purpose built and create an entire contact center in a box. Right? So you have the software, you have everything running in the cloud secure, you have a device, you have a set of peripherals, you can pretty much hand over your agents a complete solution. So it's not just about the front office, it's also about the back office. There's people processing your payments or paychecks. There's people doing insurance claims. We've talked, and you'll hear a lot of presentations this week about Gen AI. Well, somebody has to create their, basically test the validity and the accuracy of those algorithms, right? Many of you will work with business process outsourcers to do just that. There's people saying, yeah, accurate, not so accurate, right? They're getting access to your proprietary algorithms. Again, this data is very important. So you need to make sure that they are focusing on doing their job with this important information and not so worried about their device and did it boot up and am I in a blue screen of death and it turns and it turns and they can't get going and they can't find their app. And that's another case that we wanted to solve for. And finally, taking the front desk a little further, you have all these people, right? You go into a hotel, right? You're all at hotels. Maybe some of you live here, but most of you I assume are at hotels. They have like a laptop sitting in front of them. Why does somebody need an $800,000 laptop to check you in? Why do you have to go ahead when you go to the doctor's office and they go on that, you know, you go into the patient room and they fill in all your information. Oh, Melissa, I see you got your blood test done. I see you're allergic to this medicine, right? Super, super personal details. And it's sitting there in a physical computer. A lot of that software, even that software may not be cloud-based. Why does that, why did, and again, why do they need the power to be able to do that? Or in some cases, we actually had a customer doing kiosk where they wanted to make various HR, like employee handbooks. I'm not talking personal HR, but like, you know, HR data, employee handbooks, that kind of information available. They were able to use the thin client in, as basically a kiosk so that people could log in and get the information they need, and they knew that information would be secure in the cloud. So now that we've talked about ways to use Workspace's thin client, let's talk a little bit more about some of its benefits and a few of its features. So as I mentioned, cost, right? Biggest challenge. How do I get down these costs? So now let's talk about what it costs. That device that I had in my hand, the thin client, starts at $195. We really wanted to make this cost effective. If you were to go to the lowest end business laptop, and someone's gonna always tell me, oh, I found a laptop for $300, but would you really give your employees a $300 laptop? So usually there's $600, $1,000, $1,200 compared to $195 cost. We're shipping this through Amazon Business. For those of you who have Business Prime, not only is the shipping affordable, it is free. So it's just Prime. You're not gonna have to pay for it, and because it goes directly to end users, you don't have to pay to store it. There's also a lot less support costs. Nobody is going to drop a coffee on a keyboard. Maybe they would, but you know, there's a keyboard connected. Replace it with a $15 keyboard. Not have to basically throw out or go call your warranty provider on your laptop. Screen? Well, I, I can say I've dropped the thin client. No screen shattered. There's no screen on it. So with a lot less moving parts, we're looking at a life cycle easily four or five years for the thin client. And your breakfast and your overall support cost are dramatically reduced. And as I mentioned, one of our key things that we built for was simplicity. We know that you don't have time to go out there and touch every device. So we wanted a single point of control. Whether you have 10 thin clients, 1,000 thin clients, or 10,000, there is a very simple interface, and I'll show you a couple screenshots in a second, where you can see the entire fleet of these devices and see their status and push updates per your choice over the air. Now, because it's a thin client, it does require virtual desktop setup. We had customers 
In fact, we had one customer who was working with workspaces and AppStream. He selected a set of AppStream stacks. The other person then also selected a set of workspaces. Was able then to connect those workspaces and AppStream stacks to the physical device in literally one minute for each product. So two minutes, he had everything set up. So let's take a look at what this, kind of, what this looks like. So this is just a few of the screenshots that are uh, of AWS console for this product. So we created a construct called an environment. An environment is based on your region, and what's, it's that kind of point of connectivity. So these workspaces that are given this activation code will be registered over the air to this particular environment. Same thing, too, for workspaces, web portals, or for app stream stacks. That's it. Pick your, pick your virtual desktop. Make sure you got the right directory set up. Give the activation code. You're done. It's activated. It will show up on this device list. So you get to know all of your inventory, whether it's active or inactive, whether it's compliant. Has it been updated to the latest software set, to the latest operating system, to the latest client software? When has it last been accessed? And there's a whole bunch of other details, and we're going to be adding more and more details over time. So this is just the overview page. And then software patch management. We needed to make sure that we could have these patches update on your schedule. So you can select one or two devices, or three or four if you want. Test the update. It will patch just those devices. If you're good, then you can deploy it to a set of devices, to, a, to an environment, or to a whole set of environments. You can choose the maintenance window, and it will actually update on your user's local time zone, right? Because no one wants anyone interrupted while they're in the middle of their workday, especially if we're doing people like, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm taking this client customer call, and uh, oh, look, my system's updating. Well, that's not going to happen. You're, just, you're setting this up, and you know what time, what shift is the right way to update. Now, of course, too, as I mentioned, sometimes these contract workers leave. So you wanted a quick and simple way to select a device and just deregister them from the virtual desktop with a click of a button. They're gone, the connection's broken, and then that, that thin client can be re-registered to another user. Or you could switch it from workspaces to AppStream if you wish. So everything is remotely resettable. You, as IT administrator, would never have to go in and physically touch this device. So that's how it helps IT. But what about the end user? So we heard from customers that it could still take two or three hours, even if they're using zero touch provisioning, to get a contract worker or one of these task workers up and running. Software center, what's that? Where's my apps? How do I log in? Why is it not updating? So we set ourselves a goal. We wanted to be able to give a box to an end user, and we've actually done time tests. Pull it out of the box. Cable in the peripherals, your keyboard, your mouse, your headset, and a webcam. Connect the monitors. Go through a setup experience, recognizes those peripherals. Put in your activation code to now register the device, and bring up the virtual desktop login screen in under five minutes. Time and time again, we had customers doing this in five minutes or less, and one's like, you know, I can do it in two, and they did. Two minutes, out of the box to accessing just the applications they need in their virtual desktop. Because those are already pre-provisioned, right? You have an image. You know exactly what applications you want these workers to use. And so when they log in, just, an, just those and only those applications are there. And because we're using Amazon Logistics, these devices will get there in days, not in weeks. So we can make sure that people aren't waiting to be productive. When's it coming? When's it coming? When's it coming? No. There's Amazon behind it, and we will ship it there, and they will get there on time. So with our virtual desktops, AppStream workspaces, they, you know, they may run a little differently. So we needed to make sure it was very easy and to create a toolbar that works the same, no matter if you're streaming an application or streaming a whole desktop. 
And you need to have the functions available like any operating system. You need to be able to quickly lock and unlock that device. If you have contact center workers, they are required. Anyone comes in the room, like you've, you've been on a call, sometimes you, know, like you hear people in the back in the room, they're supposed to immediately lock their device. Nobody, roommates or whatever, is supposed to see what's on their screen. So we can lock it, we can put it to sleep, we can also allow the user to reset it if they need to, even though you know, most times admin will reset it. They can change the volume functions, mute all the functions, see, see what their local time zone is, change the clock. So we, we are basically creating a business operating system on this thin client so they can have every uh, key uh, that they need to use to do their job, as well as you know, your standard shortcuts to lock using the keyboard or cut and paste. So all of that is there on this thin client. And finally, security, right? At Amazon, we say security is job zero. So this device is locked. What that means is that you cannot download or upload any files or applications. You are in complete control of what you make available on the virtual desktop. There's not gonna be any shadow IT apps. You're not gonna have to worry about somebody sticking in that thumb drive and pulling down files. We use a secure on-chip secret to create a token to then get the provision certificate. So there is hardware-based authentication to create a trusted device in your environment. As I mentioned, you only have the applications that you want and all the data is in the cloud. So there is nothing stored locally on workspaces than client. All your data is either in the cloud, and when it's transferred in the cloud, it is encrypted. So whether at rest or in transit, all data is encrypted. So you can feel good about the information and giving that very private information that your workforce needs to do their job. So now I'm going to hand it over to Rafael and talk about Intuit's journey. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, my name is Rafael Blanco. I am the global um, endpoint engineer for Intuit. What is Intuit? Intuit is probably, we joke internally, one of the biggest company in fintech that nobody, almost nobody knows. Everybody knows our products. Intuit guide uh, and our mission is to prosper, uh, power prosperity around the world for all our customers. Intuit is known because of TurboTax, Great Karma, QuickBooks, MailChimp, and ProConnect. Who I am? Well, like many of you guys, I started as a service desk person, picking calls, supporting using remotely. Then I went to be a team lead, then a manager, and now I am the global engineer, uh, endpoint engineer manager for Intuit. At Intuit, we support over 50,000 physical endpoints. But there's a limitation there. We got 50,000 physical devices that we have to purchase. Like Melissa mentioned, we have to chip. We need to keep updating the operating system. We need to keep making sure that your device is clean, is working in the best condition possible. At an Intuit, we gave choices to our employees. If they have an employee and his team want to have a Mac, they can. They want to have a PC, they can. So these are very expensive devices. Melissa mentioned earlier a $6,000 computer that I use. Yes, we're going to discuss that. I do have a $6,000 MacBook Pro laptop and a Mac Studio that I use constantly. But there's a twist here. This little device for a week I use it instead of those machines. Nobody noticed. Nobody noticed that I was not in a powerful computer. Nobody noticed that this is a $200 device. Only my kids, actually. One of you guys mentioned early, oh, it looked like a fire cube. That's exactly what my 10-year-old say. Daddy, why you move your cube to, from the TV to your computer desk at the house? I even play with this at the office. I play with this in my home. Nobody noticed. I could do everything that I wanted to do. 
with this little device, which is more than amazing. And it's not the only device that we have tested. We have tested other devices like this from other vendors. But we have found out that this one, with the familiarity, the form factor, and other points that we're going to discuss today work amazingly well for us. So at Intuit, every decision that my team and many of our engineers make have to follow these guiding principles. Actually, the guy that wrote them with me is right here. He's in that chair. So everything. We build these guiding principles so we try to minimize pain to ourselves and our customers. If we make every decision based on this, we feel that we're going the right way. The first thing of any product that we do as an endpoint engineer team is it needs to be right for our customers. The second thing or point or principle is that it needs to work at scale. It needs to be global which create a problem like Melissa say. You ship computers to other countries, you never know when they're gonna get there. You might get them there six months later. We have seen that pain. With this device, we will not be able to even need to track where these devices are or self because the power of Amazon will do it for us. Like Melissa mentioned, security is key at Intuit. Everything that we do needs to be secure. Also, it needs to be efficient to support by the service desk and the frontline team. We don't want them to have a lot of pain, a lot of things to do. With this device, if you are working from home, Amazon take care of that. But if you are in the office, we just swap it. It's beautiful. And it's a $200 swap. Finally, it need to be uh, protecting our investments. And a $200 device, pretty much by default, check that in the checklist. So my team have a vision, and this box help us with that vision, just like everything else we do. We empower our workforce through seamless, secure, innovative computing experience where we try to enhance collaboration, simplify complexity, and ensure accessibility for all while driving productivity and creativity across the user landscape. This will allow us to accelerate that. But let's talk a little about my users, or we call them personas. So we have, like many of you guys, we have corporate users. In our case, many of them are, most of them are, or developers. They have powerful computers, they need to have the latest and the greatest. Right now, this is not necessarily the answer for that. But we also have two other additional personas. We have our life experts, and we have our partner product experts. But it's one persona here that we're gonna discuss a little more about. You probably have seen her in our ads. She's one of our longest uh, life expert or bookkeepers. If you see TurboTax ad, you fill your um, taxes every year and you need help, you press that wonderful button and she might be the person helping you in the other side. It's a one-way video, two-way audio transaction. And this is our Uber work, uh, way of working. For this individual, they have a full-time job, but they want to generate more money, or they want to become their own business owner, having a team of people doing this kind of job. For each one of them, we ship them computers. We have to maintain the operating system. We have to clean them every year. When they stop working, they have to send it back. When they break, we have to ship them another computer. And re re like Melissa mentioned, request the other one to be sent. And like that, that's why we want to focus on this particular persona. All what I, that I just say is a manual process. Every step of what I just mentioned is a 
point of failure, shipping computers. How you know somebody ship you a computer back? Yes, you have a tracking number. Many times they might ship you a rock. I have seen that. Also, shipping back and forward is not quite as effective, especially across countries. That's very painful and costly. Yes, between California and Texas, where I am from, 50 bucks. Between Filipina and California, it's not $50. It's a lot more. Also, shipping computers back and forward is not necessarily global. There's many countries that you have to buy the computers locally. How do you image them? Yes, zero trust provisioning, but it can take hours. How you control that internet connection? You don't. You don't know what people have in their home. You don't even know, don't, don't know what people have in their office. It takes time. It takes effort. That means somebody knew from day one, they are not productive until day five. Also, it's not sustainable. Not for our environment and not for our bottom line either. Computers get broken, they get stolen, they get sold on eBay. I have seen that too. But this workspaces thing client is compelling for Intuit because of logistics, like I mentioned. Cost is expandable. It's a familiar form factor, easy. You pretty much know the cable that you need to connect and you know where to connect it. There's not too much more that you can do wrong with it. And that's amazing for our end users. They don't, they don't have to call the services and ask where I connect the USB-A. There's 20 USB-A. No, there's one here. Oh, Ethernet. This is perfect for us. Not everybody has a good Wi-Fi. But many of them have Ethernet. You can connect it. You assure another less pain point for your services. But overall, the best thing about this is not even the hardware is that it take away having a whole team to clean computers, fix them, deal with the vendors, ship them back and forward, and it outsource that to Amazon, who basically, today is Cyber Friday, <laughs> uh, Cyber Monday, sorry, do it better than everybody else. And today, if you're not purchasing, you are here with us, so thank you. So I talk about it, but I didn't talk how we're going to plan to roll it out. It just got launched. We got some of these devices, but we have not rolled out. So we have a plan where we will continue testing. And the possibility for us is that this will go to 15,000 users around the world very fast. But that's the number today. In three years, this might go to 100,000 users. That's 100,000 people that I don't have to ship computers back and forward. 100,000 endpoints that we don't have to keep up today. That's the beauty of this and the partnership we have with Amazon. And with that, I'm going to leave you with Melissa. Thank, Thank you. Raphael. You're welcome. See, look at that. It's always great to hear directly from customers who've been work, working with us since the very beginning and helping and take their feedback and actually making this thin client better for all of you. So I want to end this on cost, right? We talked about making this thing more affordable. So let's look at numbers. Now, I'm not doing a comparison here today. I just want you to think about how we look at these various costs. You know what you spend in your own environment. You know what you're paying for devices. So I mentioned $195 US, $85 if you want to use a special hub for dual screen extension. We'll assume you do. Two monitors, $100 each. If you go on, on Amazon, you can get a whole set of peripherals for $85. You may want to do that. You could actually go things with Cisco and get a lot higher end peripherals as well. So really your choice. But we've been testing it to make sure because we wanted to keep costs down with very low end uh, type peripherals. So you don't need the best of the best to make this work. 
There is a license fee uh, to monitor, maintain, and manage this device, $6 per device per month. So not per user, user switch doesn't matter. You just pay per device that you have in inventory. Compare that to the operating system, the EDR, right, or the endpoint, the endpoint detection and response software, other forms of management software that you may actually put on your device. Support, imaging, inventory management, break fix. Well, as we said, you're not even, in fact, Raphael makes a great point. Because you know, we, we ship a lot of laptops to, to Amazonians. I've actually been in that facility. There is a whole team of people that sits there and cleans the devices. All those stickers that you put on your laptops, all the junk that you drop in that keyboard, there's a team that cleans that. So you're not gonna have, you know, there's really nothing to clean on this device. Again, nothing to break. So we're basically saying it's near zero. Logistics, again, Amazon Prime ships for free. And you'll actually see it on various countries and more and more countries coming soon. Then the virtual desktop. So our virtual desktop prices span. Secure browsing, $7 per user per month. App stream, application streaming, a little bit higher. What I'm using here is the typical street price that we have for uh, a performance workspace. So if you want good performance, and you want to test the device, and this is typically what we tested with, was performance level workspaces to make sure that the audio video worked well, it comes to be just shy of $500 per, user, uh, per year, per year. And so when you add all of this up, you're just over $1,100. You're less than the price or around the same price as of an average laptop. But what you need to be thinking about, this is just your first year cost. Your laptop's going to maybe, if you're lucky, last you three years. Right? We all say we want three years. You don't usually get it. We built this considering around a four-year life cycle. So those hardware costs up front, you're not going to be keeping rebuying them. And if someone was to walk away with this device, you're writing off $195 instead of $1,200. But the reality is they may not want it. You cannot turn it into an entertainment device. It does not flip backwards. You can't stick a remote. Remote's not going to work on it anymore. So they can't use it. They can't re-image it and sell it on eBay. So there's a good chance that you're going to get more and more of your devices back, which then also lowers the cost of ownership. Because right, every time you have to replace, you have to do all that imaging, all that shipping, and everything over and over again. So you really want to be thinking about the true total cost of ownership. It's not just your initial outlay. It's all that that you have to spend over and over again so that one employee or an employee or contractor taking over someone else's position has the equipment they need to do their job. As I mentioned, this is the newest addition to our end user computing portfolio. So our portfolio exists of workspaces, persistent desktop, app stream, non-persistent desktop, or application streaming, workspaces web. We also, which we did not talk about today, workspaces core. So this is a fully managed infrastructure that supports third-party uh, VDI like VMware or WorkSpot or LeoStream, which we will plan on supporting at, at a future point. So to wrap this all up, lower your costs. You are never, and, and, and sorry, different customer, talked to, I talked to really early on, said you're never going to change the cost equation of end user computing unless you look at the endpoint. Just think about that. If you want to really reduce your costs at a time when we are all so concerned about costs, this can actually change that cost equation for you. You don't have time as IT or supporting the IT organization. You need to be able to do everything from a central point of control. And we really try to make that management exceedingly simple. Because I've seen other thin clients. I felt like the last time I looked at thin clients, I was like going back 20 years. It's like, 
what is, what is it, PowerShell script I'm doing? What is this? Like, you know, it's very, you know, we just like click, 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 and done. Of course, everything that you see here in the console that you saw some of the screenshots is all available via API. So yes, you can automate all of it. And then for your end, end users, how quickly can you get them up and running so they can do their job? We can do this in just minutes. And whether they're Wi-Fi, because yes, so you do see the Ethernet port, but Wi-Fi is supported. Um, so whether the, whatever network they need to connect to, whatever device they need to cable up, just minutes to get them to do their jobs that they need to do. And none of this would matter if we didn't have security at its heart. So again, an on-chip secret, hardware-based authentication, no download, no upload, no data on the device. And we also made sure, and we've tested, not just with contact center applications like WebEx and Amazon Connect, but with Teams and Zoom to make sure that performance works. Whether, you're call, whether your workers are just using audio for soft phone calls or they're doing teleconferencing like they do at Intuit, we wanted to make sure that you had good performance. And so with that, I say thank you for listening to Amazon Workspace's Thin Client. We have a lot of sessions on end user computing, talking about the various different products and services in that family that I showed you. Oops, let's go back. Okay, one second. QR codes, right? If you would want to get your hands on on this device, if you take this Q. I swear I am not touching that. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. OK. Um, there is a hands-on demo. So it's in our EUC village in, in the AWS. OK, I don't know. It, doesn't, it just doesn't want to stay there. But uh, we do have, and you can come out to me later, we are doing a private workshop. So uh, this device is in, in the Cisco booth. It's in the AWS booth. And if you were able to actually catch that QR code because it did not want to stay on the screen, uh, we are doing a private workshop. Uh, we also have Chalk Talks. And here's a list of some of the other EUC uh, different sessions, if end user computing is your thing, that you may want to see during your course of your time here at reInvent. And with that, from me, from Raphael, Thank you, and please, please, please do fill out your survey. And we'll stay around for another uh, 15 minutes or so for questions. I'm happy uh, to take some questions on the stage if anyone has those. You'll just have to uh, speak kind of loudly because we don't have a mic to give you. Do you want to come join me? Thank you.